The following Downstage Center program was originally broadcast in February 2008. Welcome to Downstage Center, a presentation of XM Satellite Radio and the American Theater Wing. I'm John Von Susten, Program Director of XM28 on Broadway. And I'm Howard Sherman, Executive Director of the American Theater Wing. Today we welcome a guest who made his Broadway debut in 1982 in Present Laughter, currently starring as the President of the United States in November. That's the name of the show, November. And in between, a Tony nomination and a Drama Desk Award for the Revival of Guys and Dolls, Drama Desk Award for Love, Valor, Compassion, Tony Award and Drama Desk Award for the Revival of a Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum, Tony Award and Drama Desk Award for playing Max Bialystok and the Producers, most recently The Frogs, The Odd Couple, Butley, and now November. Nathan Lane, welcome to Downstage Center. Uh, thanks. Thanks, fellas. <laughs> nice to be here. Let's get out the steroids and, and, and start this interview. Okie doke. <laughs> uh, David Mamet has written a comedy about the President of the United States named Charles Smith. You are the President, and the entire show takes place in the Oval Office, and this is a man who faces a problem. He's trying to get reelected, doesn't have money, not very popular. Yeah. Is there a question the, in the there? The question is, uh, tell, <laughs> tell all us of about that Charles is, Smith in November. All of that is true. Um, yeah, it's a, he's written a kind of um, absurdist political cartoon in the form of a play. And um, he, there is some uh, uh, similarity to, to the uh, current president in that he's uh, incredibly unpopular uh, at the time of the, the play, and he's um, seeking re-election. And, um, and actually, in the beginning of the play, he's basically informed he's on the way out and it's over. And then it's, it's really about his struggle to <laughs> turn that around. And he sees uh, a, a, a small avenue in, in uh, the pardoning of the turkeys each year, and uh, he gets a, a small fee for doing that. And uh, somehow he decides he can um, uh, wangle more money out of the, the turkey people and... Um, perhaps put that into his legacy, which primarily he's concerned with initially is his library, that he's not going to be getting a presidential library, and that really irks him. And uh, so um, it's it's a long build-up, and then um, uh, he's uh, that doesn't quite work out, and, and so through various means he continues to try to... to uh, uh, he, he's going to change the holiday of Thanksgiving to pork and then maybe to tuna. And then f finally, he's going to destroy the, the holiday altogether and blackmail the turkey people. And eventually they they give in. And um, But by then, his, his speechwriter, played by the brilliant uh, Laurie Metcalf, has, has convinced him that maybe... Um, Maybe there's 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 more to this than just um, his legacy. Maybe he could, uh, if he really spoke to the people, um, uh, turn things around. And and she kind of uh, reaches somewhere the the his what little idealism he has left, and uh, he decides there you know he really could win the election, and that which is where sort of the, the first act ends. This sounds a little different, certainly, than, say, Glengarry Glen Ross or American Buffalo. What were you expecting when you were told you were being sent to David Mamet's script, and what was your reaction once you read it? Um, well, Joe Mantello called me and uh, said he had just finished reading it and that it was uh, hilarious and that he, he heard my voice um, when reading this character and... Uh, we had, um, I had actually, we had crossed paths, uh, David and myself. Uh, he had asked me to, um, a couple of times before, to do two other plays of his, uh, also comedies, uh, Boston Marriage. Um, he wanted me to play a woman, and uh, <laughs> which I didn't wind up doing. And then um, I was doing The Frogs, and at the same time he had sent me this play, Romance, which is a, a, a farce. And um, uh, but I, I, I just it was a conflict of dates, so I couldn't do that. And I, I thought, well, gee, I'll, you know, he'll never ask me again. Uh, but um, it was really Joe who thought of me, and and uh, once I read the play, I, um, I fell in love with it. I just, I thought I, I'd love to be the guy who says that for the first time on stage. It was, um, it, it, I thought it was truly, truly hilarious, and and um, and also had something to say. 
I love the comment you just made about being the guy to say that for the first time on stage. Does does that really matter to an actor? Really, being the first. Um, very often, uh, uh, it's you know there are many reasons why you want to do something. Whether it's a, a you, you feel it's a particular challenge, or you feel it's the the people you want to work with, a director or actors, and then or an author, and and uh, in this case, certainly that was a, a huge part. But um, uh, sometimes it's a you'll come across a, a scene or a speech or, or something that. Uh, Yes, that stays with you, and you say to yourself, "I, I, I really, I want to be the first one to do that." Um, yeah, there, there is a little bit of that that goes on in your head. Now, the first time that you did read the script and you saw the character Charles Smith and the others that revolve around him, whether on stage or on the telephone, because he gets a lot of phone calls. Yes, he does. What yes. was your impression of them versus reality? In other words, are these people plausible, or is that part of the, the farce? Is that they're over the top? Uh, well, you know, I don't, I, I don't think you, it's, you think of it that way. I mean, it has to be, you have to be playing it realistically. I mean, he's, I mean, the stakes uh, are very high, um, uh, and it's because essentially he's told it's over, and then it's about him fighting his way back um, and trying to, to at first, you know. Um, um, take care of his legacy, which is terribly important to him, especially in terms of his wife, Kathy, who you only hear about. She makes a few calls. But, um, no, all of that has to be um, uh, has to be real. Uh, the, the situation and the and the sometimes the the dialogue is outrageous or absurd, but it has to be. Um, you have to play it realistically. I mean, when I'm talking on the phone, I'm I'm listening for what the other person is saying, and it's a, you know, phone calls are are are, are tricky uh, on stage and um, creating whoever that other person is, whether it's. Um, uh, uh, for example, the <laughs> the uh, the man I speak to who is head of the Pork Association, his name is Tink. I believe that's his nickname, Tink. And and for some reason, uh, as I've done the show, it's um, I find Tink rather amusing. He's I I just think he's the the funniest guy. <laughs> and uh, of course, we're discussing things about having people killed. Uh, and and also destroying the holiday of Thanksgiving, uh, taking it away from the turkey people and making it about pork. Um, but uh, it, that it has to be it has to be real. Otherwise, uh, you know, people you you have to be invested in it. And and I think the situation itself is outrageous, and then and that takes care of itself. I mean, he's a very uh, volatile character. I mean, he sort of holds on to his. He has a lot of anger and a lot of issues, and um, he's. Uh, I guess uh, people would say he's rather politically incorrect. But uh, and then you know some of these things build and build, and and then he lets go. But um, yeah, it, it certainly is. You you have to hold on to the, to your your reality. And the pacing is pretty rapid uh, between the, the dialogue, but also the sound effects, the telephone, and, and the entrances and exits. Everything moves along. You're on stage basically every minute of the play. Is that pretty exhausting for you at the end of the night? Um, well, w when it's when it's going really well, it's exhilarating, and 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 you know, and then don't let me forget to. I want to <laughs> just say what a brilliant cast this is. It's uh, Laurie Metcalf, the incomparable Laurie Metcalf, and the brilliant Dylan Baker, and the wonderful. Uh, Ethan Phillips and Michael Nichols. Um, it's a, it's a, it's. Uh, uh, even though I have a lot to say in the play, it feels very much a, an ensemble piece, and we're all very dependent on each other, especially Dylan and myself. Um, uh, so, uh, um, yeah, we're all in this together, and uh, uh, yes, I mean, it certainly is. It is a fast-paced play and uh but that's part of the fun of it too and dylan's on stage pretty much the whole show also he, he absolutely plays, yeah he, he, he plays the attorney to the president There's yes a, my kind of my chief of staff right, yes right yeah how much as the show got going did frank not the pacing per se but did it grow once you had that audience reaction because it's one of those rare things a true broadway comedy people are laughing throughout how um, did that affect the show well, you uh, obviously you're hoping that they'll be laughing. <laughs> um, it's always a surprise where the laughs come. Uh, you have an idea, and then it's always something you didn't expect that gets a huge laugh because they're, the audience is 